Okay, time for a lecture. Time for getting all preachy. No, don't do the preachies. I want to hear. I want to hear about Eden, Cumberland, and Folsom. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do do the Eden. Do the Folsom. Do the Cumberland. Do it. Oh yeah. Do the parallel flaking. Parallel. Okay, these, I'm going to do a little lecture on these. I'm not going to do any of this flint napping, not anytime soon. And it's for a reason. I have done this, I've tried these. Oh yes, I've tried all of these. But I'm not going to do these on video as a demonstration. I'm going to refer you to other people uh, if you ask. Uh, until I can have some more time on my hands to develop these. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about this one first, the Cumberland. Uh, one of my favorite videos on the Cumberland, and I'll see if I can find the link. I have posted the link recently to this one in a comment. Uh, but I'll try to find it again and post it in the description of this video. Anyway, but one of my favorite videos shows a technique with a branch, let's see, a forked branch with a spot here where there's some bark taken out and strapped to this limb is a antler, antler uh, piece. strapped to the to this part and down here probably also another piece strapped down there and the preform for the Cumberland is put in between this fork and pressure this is this part is on the ground this is anchored in some way usually with a foot on it and this is a uh, pressure applied to this stick and it compresses this preform Cumberland preform now these are pretty thick okay is that visible what happens is once this pressure is applied and there's sufficient pressure on this preform, it has a a nub, let's say nub, where the antler is touching it. Antler. Antler. This is the antler piece. Okay, the nub of this preform is touching that antler. There's pressure on that one little spot right there. And there's pressure here too. Now, this can be well rounded or whatever. This tip doesn't really matter, it can be various configurations. Anyway, what happens once you have sufficient pressure, you take your, let's say, a mallet. And you strike. You strike this preform with the mallet. So what does that mean, boys and girls? What have we recently learned about striking the workpiece with a mallet? Uh, that's called reverse indirect. That's probably, well, that's the reason why I went to this one first. Reverse indirect percussion. If you don't know what we're talking about, look at the previous videos. The, you don't find the reverse indirect percussion in YouTube title descriptions, I don't think. Maybe you do. I don't know. But you will in this one. All right. When you strike with a mallet on the workpiece, 
you have reverse indirect percussion. Okay, just so we're clear. Now, there's pressure involved. So what is this called? This is called pressure assisted reverse indirect percussion. Okay, got it? Pressure assisted reverse indirect percussion. Do I think this is how false, I mean, uh, Cumberlands were made? Yep, I think it's a possibility. How about freehand? That's what everyone wants me to do. Freehand? I don't think it was done freehand. Pure pressure? Pure pressure? Nothing but pressure. Yep, possibility. Now there's two types of pressure. There is direct and indirect. Well, yes. I bet you didn't know that. Well, this is probably disputed, right? But direct pressure, everyone does that. Everyone is doing it. It's just holding the pressure flaker in your hand and applying pressure directly. Indirect pressure is some kind of levered device or some sort of pivot point between you and the workpiece. Indirect pressure usually means that you're using a lever. Lever. Direct pressure is what I call freehand. Right? Uh, that's probably not a good description, but it's just... Uh, it's just directly applied by hand with a pressure flaker. But with an indirect pressure, there's a lever. Now, this is where I favor as far as the pressure technique for Cumberland. I tend to lean toward the indirect pressure or a lever. Now, do I think that it was done with Folsom? Yes. Cumberland and Folsom are very similar technologies, except for one very big difference. Thinness. Folsom is extremely thin. Cumberland is not. Okay? Now, are all Folsoms thin? Are all of them thin? No. Not all thin. Are all Cumberlands thick? No. Not all Cumberlands are thick. Okay, there are exceptions. If you dwell on the exceptions, you're going to make yourself uh, into a pretzel. <laughs> mental pretzel. You're gonna, you'll, be, you'll be doing mental, mental um, tanglings. Okay? Don't concentrate on the exceptions, but you can be aware that there are exceptions. All right, so I covered Folsom and Cumberland. Parallel flaking, I'm going to refer you to flake over grind. Flake over grind. Everything you want to know about parallel flaking, flake over grind, is where you're going to go, or I'm going to tell you to go. What are the main takeaways from this? Uh, regularized, regularized preforms. Now, flake over grind is ground. They grind the preforms. This is fl flake over grind or fog. They grind the, pre the uh, preforms with machinery. Uh, natural, the natural way is to regularize. Uh, regularize with flaking. Okay, this is the new, this is the old. Now, are there exceptions? Yes. Flake over grind was done old, in the old ways, in the old days. 
by at least one group, Egyptians, uh, during the Neolithic. Pretty sure it was Neolithic. They used to grind and flake. The the you can look it up. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'm gonna try to find the references so I can save you some time, if I have time. There's also uh, Chinese arrowheads. Chinese arrowheads that I've seen that also have a combination of grinding and flaking. Okay, so those are two exceptions that I can see off the top of my head for flake over grind done in the old days with the old ways. But most of the time this is new. The, the old way to do it most of the time is with regularization or to regularize with flaking. All right, so that's parallel flaking. Eden. Eden is closely related to parallel flaking. So, Eden was also prepared, regularized, regularized preforms or resharpening or retouching. The Edens were done in three ways. Regularized preforms or resharpening that regularized the surface or retouching that regularized the surface. What's the difference between retouching and, re and resharpening? Well, retouching is a general term for any, any work on the surface or edge of the workpiece. Any, for any reason. Resharpening is specifically for resharpening. Uh, regularizing is specifically for preparation for a further step. Okay, there's going to be, a, this is a preparation for a step after the regularization. Otherwise, it's just regular flaking. I make a distinction to regularize it, I'm preparing it for the next step. That's where I make the distinction. I don't regularize it and then say call it good. No, that's just flaking. Okay? So there you go. These, I'm not going to demonstrate on video. I'm going to refer you to various other videos and other sources. Okay? Alrighty.